Sensor systems in Elite Dangerous have been mostly untouched since the game launched. While effective, these systems are limited compared to current competitors in the space sim genre. This video will make a series of suggestions to improve the sensor mechanics and related functionality, with the goal of making the system more intuitive, flexible, and powerful than the current standard. The radar display system in Elite Dangerous builds on a well-established lineage, whose original iteration was the first radar system deployed in any 3D game. The current version offers two sets of icons displayed in five possible colors. Filled square returns represent NPC objects. Hollow squares represent players. Triangles represent a ship with weapons deployed. The color orange indicates a neutral disposition, red indicates hostility, green represents an ally, blue represents a team member, purple represents a target hostile to a team member, gray indicates objects, missiles, and debris, and a flashing red and white pattern indicates a ship actively attacking the player. The radar shows all targets around the ship, but does not show the exact boundaries of large objects, stations, or debris fields. Objects above or below your ship's lateral line are drawn with a line tracing up or down from lateral to the object, assisting with positional orientation. This system works well and provides some of the bare essential information required for players to navigate their surroundings, but it's far from the capabilities of current real-world radar systems. While I don't expect Elite Dangerous to aspire to the level of detail that military fire control radar allows, it would be great to see a few of the following changes. Target Status Override A fancy name for a simple set of options available on the nav panel contacts list. When players select another ship, they're given the following set of options. Mark Target Hostile, Mark Target Ally, and Mark Target Neutral. Selecting these options changes the color indicated on the ship's radar display and the target's disposition to the ship's own internal systems. Turrets, PDCs, and other automated ship defenses respond accordingly. This does not affect other ships in a wing or in the instance. Target Vector Indicator The current radar does not provide any information on an object's orientation or speed. While it's possible to get orientation data from a single locked target, there isn't a way to see what all the targets are doing around a ship. Modern radar systems have this functionality, but many space games avoid it, despite being well done in the past. One easy solution is to have objects on radar leave a trail as they move. This trail grows based on the speed of the object and will naturally give an indication of the direction of movement. The trail should assume the color of the object on screen and does not need to persist for very long. Target Intentions The scanner currently allows us to infer a ship's intention by seeing when they've deployed their hardpoints, but this information can be insufficient when tracking large numbers of targets, as often happens around resource extraction sites. Many ships can have weapons deployed around the player, despite having no hostile intentions towards the player. Star Citizen found an excellent way to provide focused warnings by allowing players to see when another ship has locked onto them. This game reflects the information by drawing a line on the radar screen from a player's ship to the source of the target lock. I'm not fond of Star Citizen's method for this indicator as it's somewhat noisy when compared with all of the other lines that get drawn on their radar screens. In Elite Dangerous, target lock warnings could be reflected by marking the specific source on the radar, if it's known, or by painting the general direction of the target lock along the outer edge of the radar circle. This functionality would warn players if a security ship is interested in them, help identify possible attackers in a large swarm of targets, and provide an additional layer to effective use of stealth systems, which are themselves in desperate need of attention. Subtargeting. The mechanics behind subtargeting are useful, 
but clumsy in their current implementation. Players are often confused when they aim for a sub-target, get hit markers on the target's hull, but do not damage the module in question. Ship position and orientation affect damage to all modules, meaning that attempting to damage a module on the opposite side of the target hull will not work without specific weapons. One great way to resolve this problem is to highlight the targeted module on the target status hologram in the ship's cockpit. This highlight should be accurate to the target area, depth, and position within the ship, letting players know when they are getting the most result from an attack. This system should likewise provide warning on your own ship's status hologram when an opponent is subtargeting your ship systems and should provide the same flashing indicator when the targeted module is taking damage. This provides a strong visual indication to the player that their ship's modules are being affected by an attack and that they may need to take action on their modules panel to accommodate it. This prevents nasty surprises over the course of a fight where modules are being damaged without the player being aware until after malfunctions begin to occur. Hostile Objects One of the most difficult aspects of ship flight is the identification of hostile objects, like missiles, mines, and caustic weapons, which can inflict significant damage to onboard systems. This can be especially difficult when flying through debris fields, mining, or fighting Thargoids, where the natural cadence of battle tends to fill the environment with passive objects, like cargo containers, engineering materials, and limpets. Ship systems already understand the difference between these objects, as does the target highest threat function on key maps. Fragmentation cannons even have the screening shell experimental effect, which is intended to more effectively deal with hostile objects, but the onboard scanner does not reflect these differences. One easy way to accommodate this would be a different shape, like a cone or circle, which is reserved specifically for game objects that are not ships. These can be smaller than the standard sized objects, but use the same color scheme as in-game objects. Hostile missiles and mines will show red, and will flash red and white the same way that an attacking ship does when it fires at the player. Neutral objects will show orange, allied green, and team show blue. This configuration would provide players a better understanding of the threats they are dealing with and the nature of an incoming attack. They would see an incoming missile or limpet alert, check their radar for that object in question, and adjust their targeting or defenses in response. Team Effects on Allies with additional control over sensor systems and the ability to better recognize incoming objects, players are able to better handle friendly fire incidents and coordinate with other ships that are not on their team, but are their allies for the activity in question. This flexibility enables the expansion of various team-only experimental effects, like regeneration and concordant sequence, to be more effectively shared among allied ships. When paired with improvements to the limpet and support economy mechanics, detailed in a separate video, these changes would create a much more powerful support role for ships to fill in combat. Assisting with shield recharge, hull repair, and logistical resupply more easily. Detection range. One of the most poorly communicated aspects of ship stealth is the range at which a ship can be detected by other ships in the area. Current ship signature is a feature in the cockpit UI and is found beneath the player status indicator at the bottom right of the pilot's interface. This small signature band is meant to communicate to the player how detectable they are, but has never been adequate for any meaningful gameplay. Years later, I can only guess when other people can see me, and it makes the idea of stealth gameplay much less appealing. A large part of this problem can be mitigated by placing an emissions range number on the signature bar, 
It could overlap and push the raw signature behind it, or be off to the side. But regardless, knowing at what range a ship can be detected, and when a ship has been targeted, is key to navigating a hostile space undetected. These changes would help deal with a lot of the current issues and inefficiencies in the sensor systems. They would increase the amount of information players have without needing to change the current interface layout. These changes take advantage of current assets, with the most difficult request likely to be the module sub-targeting indicator. With the deployment of a new, more aggressive funding model, there will hopefully be more resources to commit to making these changes. That's all I have for today. Catch you all later.